Is this boat gonna float? Yeah. Uh, no, absolutely not. Almost two years ago, I started to make the cheapest gourmet sushi rolls that I can, and I achieved that goal for the most part. But I only left you with three rolls. That's just not enough to cover the wide variety of rolls that are out there. Which brings us to today. We're making a physical boatload of sushi. Four brand new rolls with a budget of $5 per serving. Originally, I wanted this sushi boat, but that's $100. Not very butt cheaper. So in the spirit of butt cheaper, we're gonna be making our own at home in a way that's not going to completely obliterate our budget. I'm gonna put all the sushi on the boat, but I can't eat it until I lay it in a body of water. And it must float. So that makes two goals for us to hit. So with all that being said, let's make this, shall we? So first we gotta make our boat. We looked up a video on how to fold a paper boat. Evan volunteered to figure that out. And well, it actually worked, look at that. Link in the description for how we did it. Onto the sushi. What have we always talked about, hmm? You absolutely must wash your rice. First you're gonna need two and a half cups or 535 grams of short grain rice. Place it into a large mesh sieve, pop that bad boy into a bowl, and fill the bowl all the way up with water till your rice is covered. Gently agitate the rice, drain the water, and repeat that process one to two more times until the water runs clear. Then comes the second issue. Well, what about the rice cooker, Josh? There's no way around it. Rice cooker is going to make the best version of rice. If you have one, then please use it. Put in equal parts water, close it, and start your rice cooker. But if you don't have a rice cooker, then obviously you can use a pot, which you'll use the same ratio of water. You'll bring the pot to a boil on high heat, then turn the heat down to low, cover with a lid, cook for 12 minutes, then turn the heat off, and leave it to steam for 10 more minutes. Listen, this is not Uncle Roger or Uncle Josh approved whatsoever, but I'm just showing you the option if you cannot afford a rice cooker. Now, while that rice is cooking, you're gonna make your seasoned rice vinegar, also called sushi zoo. In a medium sauce pot, add three tablespoons or 38 grams of sugar, one tablespoon or 18 grams of kosher salt, one cup of white distilled vinegar. Heat that over medium heat, stirring occasionally until everything's dissolved and it's steamy hot. Traditionally, you would steep kombu in this, but that doesn't exactly keep the price low, does it? So instead, we're gonna steep one sheet of nori in there for about 10 minutes, drain it, and that's your zoo. Now, once your rice is done, pop that out into a large bowl, or if you happen to have a hungary, pretty dope. Carefully season using a large spoon, drizzle your sushi zoo over the spoon to help distribute over the rice, and you're going to cut the rice. Using a sweeping motion, sweep the rice all the way to the edges of the bowl, gather it all back up into the center, season it again, cut it again, fold. It should be good to go after the second or third time. Once it tastes perfecto, it's done. Pop that back into a pot or your rice cooker to keep it warm, and we have four rolls to fill out this boat. Avocado katsu, which I like to call avocatsu, a soy brown butter mushroom, tempura sweet potato, and let's not forget our glazed spam. First, let's start with our soy brown butter mushroom because it can sit for a little bit. In a 12-inch pan, add in just enough oil to coat the bottom of the pan, heat over medium-high, add in two portobello mushrooms that have been cubed, and let those sear for two to three minutes, tossing occasionally until beautifully browned on all sides. Then add two tablespoons or 24 grams of unsalted butter, toss, and just let that cook for about one to two minutes or until the butter begins to brown. Then cut off the heat and add soy sauce to taste. Stir to coat, and that's it. First, sushi mat. Wrap that bad boy in plastic. Get yourself one sheet of nori, add on about a half cup of sushi rice, spread it out. If you have them, add some toasted sesame seeds on top. You're gonna carefully flip. All right, cool, not bad. In the lower third of your roll, add on your mushroom. In a nice row, optionally, you can add some sliced avocado. Then using your sushi mat, roll it up, crimp up a little bit more, crimp, then finishing all the way, crimping it and forming it into a beautifully shaped makimono. Remove your mat, cut it in half, and then cut into rolls. And that's your soy brown butter mushroom. So let's move on to our avocatsu. First, a very simple spicy mayo. In a small container, add three quarters of a cup or 162 grams of mayonnaise, three tablespoons or 45 grams of sriracha, a little pinch of sugar, salt to taste, serve everything together, and well, that's it. Next, an apple relish. In a small bowl, you're gonna add one green apple that's been beautifully brunoise. It's, it's just basically a very fine dice. Best way to do it, slice your apple into sheets about an eighth of an inch thick, cut those sheets into very fine matchsticks, and then cut the opposing way on the matchstick all the way down to get a beautiful brunoise. Pop that into a small bowl, along with one Thai chili, thinly sliced, three tablespoons or 45 grams of white distilled vinegar, a quarter cup or 71 grams of soy sauce, the juice of one whole lemon, optionally a little splash of mirin, but that's totally up to you. Stir together and let that sit. Now for the avocado, you only need one large avocado. Cut that into quarters, peel each piece, and then cut each quarter in half. Now for the breading station, very simple. In one bowl, one cup or 150 grams of all-purpose flour. In another bowl, two eggs plus one tablespoon or 14 grams of soy sauce. Whisk that together till combined. And then in the final bowl, one cup or 73 grams of panko breadcrumbs. If you know katsu, it's really easy. Toss it in the flour, dust off the excess, coat in your egg mixture, coat with panko, and repeat with the rest. In a seven quart heavy bottom pot, filled halfway with vegetable oil and heated to 350 Fahrenheit, add in your katsu in two batches and fry for two to three minutes or until a beautiful golden brown avocatsu emerges. Place it on a wire rack to drain and immediately season generously with salt to taste. Nori down, add on your sushi rice, spreading it all the way edge to edge, but leaving a little bit of a quarter inch lip at the top. In the lower third, add one to two of your fried avocado in a row, followed by your apple relish, some fresh cilantro sprigs, roll it up nice and toit, 
cooked and beautiful. Remove from the mat and cut into six to eight pieces. Next, tempura sweet potato. You're gonna need one large sweet potato. Peel that bad boy, cut it in half lengthwise, then cut each half in half again to get quarters, and then slice that into wedges that are just under a quarter inch thick. Separately, to make your tempura batter, get a medium sized bowl, add in one cup or 150 grams of all purpose flour, half a teaspoon or half a gram of baking powder. Whisk together till combined, then mix in three quarters of a cup or 180 milliliters of carbonated water and one large egg. Once it's thoroughly mixed, it's okay if there's a couple of lumps. Add an additional soda water if needed, then strain out your lumps, and now you're ready to fry using your same fry oil from before. Toss your sweet potato in a little bit of plain all purpose flour, dunk in your tempura batter, and immediately drop into your fry oil that's been preheated to 350 Fahrenheit. Then just fry those bad boys for two to three minutes. While those are frying, I'm gonna make a very simple chili sauce. Small bowl. Three tablespoons of 45 grams of mayonnaise, one tablespoon or 18 grams of a spicy chili sauce of your choice, one teaspoon or six grams of soy sauce, and stir together until combined. That's it. Real simple. If I ever seen a beautiful sweet potato, it looks like this right here. Once it's done and crispy, pull it out, drain it on a wire rack, and immediately season a taste with salt. Nori down. Sushi rice. Slide onto your mat. Add on your sweet potato in a nice row, followed by two batons of fresh cucumber. Josh, how do you get this shape? Can you please help me out? <laughs> of course I can. It's literally just a seedless English cucumber. Cut into segments half the length of your nori, and you're going to cut off just the cheeks, if you will. You're then going to cut those into beautiful batons, about a third of an inch wide, and that's it. Follow that with Thai basil leaves or regular basil leaves, whichever. Optionally, if you want a little bit of you can add some very thinly sliced serrano and your sauce to your heart's desire. Roll that bad boy up and then cut your roll into six to eight pieces. We're on to our last one, the spam roll. First, a very basic glaze. Medium sauce pot. Add in two tablespoons or 26 grams of light brown sugar. Follow with half a tablespoon or eight grams of white distilled vinegar, half a tablespoon or seven grams of sriracha, one tablespoon or 14 grams of soy sauce, optionally one tablespoon or 18 grams of hoisin. Turn the heat on and stir until completely dissolved. Pour into a container and you're done. Now hold on one second. Before we move on, what are we gonna do with all this remaining sushi soup? We'll make a pickle relish for this roll. So take your remaining sushi soup, bring it to a boil in a medium-sized sauce pot. In a separate container, you're gonna add in a quarter cup or 42 grams of finely diced cucumber, a quarter cup or 42 grams of finely diced onion, a quarter cup or 42 grams of red bell pepper, also finely diced, and finally, a quarter cup or 42 grams of finely diced green bell pepper. Pour your hot sushi soup on top, stir, and let that sit until room temp. Now look, the spam is just dummy easy. You literally just pop it out of the can, cut it into half inch thick, but and if you have a grill, you can totally heat that bad boy up, heat it over medium high, or you can use a grill pan. Once your grill is hot, hot, lightly spray with oil and add in your spam, grill on all sides until you get some beautiful color. Then immediately brush every single side with your glaze, turning often, brushing and turning until they're glistening like dark obelisks standing in the night or uh, something like that. And now we assemble. Nori down, sushi rice, slide it onto the mat, add in two pieces of your spam or more if you want. These are pretty thick, so roll that bad boy up, slice it beautifully just like the rest, and then all you have to do is load up that boat beautifully. And I kind of wanted to go with a nice little gradient here, right? We've got our little sections. Once your boat is filled, any toppings will go on now. On the avocatsu, you'll add nice little dots of spicy mayo. Now on the spam roll, you're just gonna add a nice light spoonful of your pickled relish directly on top, plus some cilantro if you desire. Now to keep this boat looking pretty, we didn't stack all the sushi on top of it, so you can't see every roll that we made. This boat could probably serve six people, and that comes up to $5.06 per serving, which puts me slightly over budget, but hey, delete the most expensive roll out of here, and you're good to go. But we know why you're here. Forget the sushi. Let's see if this thing floats. I need a pool noodle. Thanks, Kendrick, that you strategically had that. I only used half of a pool noodle. How much is a pool noodle? $2 for the pack. $2 for the pack. $1, but cheaper? Here we go. <laughs> It floats! Eat my sushi! Right now, this is uh, currently leaking through my ceiling, and I don't know why. Just joy. Here we are. Welcome. We have four different rolls. Cheap price for this right here, for the whole goddamn thing. You ain't never gonna spend that little at a restaurant. And the beauty of it is, many of these are vegetarian. Completely accidentally, because that's really the only way to save money, let's be honest. Let's start with the one that I'm gonna like the most. Spam. Fantastic. It's salty, it's fatty, it's rich but balanced. There's the sweetness, it's smoky. I think I got hot glue in my mouth. Yep, swallow that. It's good. Moving on, avocatsu, a vegetarian's dream. Mmm, let me tell you something. That avocatsu is good enough to make your gut dang boat spin. Look how good this is in Florida. It worked, and everyone didn't believe me? Absolutely not. I made backups. Look at that. It's obviously creamy, but you get that immediate crunch. Your, your brain almost goes, is this like fried chicken or something? And then right away, the avocado's like, Moving on to tempura sweet potato. Ooh, underrated. Fragrant, sweet, crunchy. It's a refreshing roll. I can eat like a hundred of these and I know I'm gonna feel great afterwards. Love it. Not low calorie. Mm. Last one, it's really hard to choose. Okay, mushroom was my favorite. Every single one of these are fantastic. You make all of them, you decide which one your favorite is. The goddamn boat floats, all right? Mission accomplished. On budget and bon voyage. Mm.